when I joined the Jefferson Starship, my intention was, I'm going to give this two albums in three years, and then I'm moving on, you know, because I always figured three years was kind of my standard <laughs> for doing things, you know, and it didn't quite work out that way. It almost did, because after about three years, we reached the point to where um, <clears throat> Grace Slick had rejoined the band in 1981 after a two-year absence. She came back in. And then we did a couple of albums after, you know, I was happy to have her back in the band, but what was really odd is like when Grace came back, it's kind of like the popularity dipped a little bit right at first. You know, the album sales went down a little bit. Um, it's kind of like we sort of lost our focus a little bit. And then Paul Kantner started kind of going out of left field, you know, and wanting to really just completely take over the band as a dictator. and. So I thought, well, it's been a little more than three years. Maybe it's time to move on, you know. And then Paul decided to quit. And that kind of changed everything for us. And that's when we redefined the band and reinvented ourselves. And so we want to go about, we want to explore a whole new musical process here. We brought in new producers. Uh, we wanted to go high tech, you know, sampling, sequencing, you know, synthesizers, synclaviers, the works. And so we came out with Knee Deep in the Hoopla. And then, once again, really reinvented ourselves. A lot of my friends in L.A. then were like, uh, wow, what's this keyboard sound? What's, you know, the guys who were like studio cats, you know, uh, were like, how did you guys do that? Where did that sound come from? I haven't heard that before. You know, so, and it, a lot of it was Peter Wolf who produced yeah. the album. You know, he was just, uh, is a musical genius, a technical genius, and brought in that whole new electronic way of making music for us. But, but still keep the heart and soul in it, too. We built the city, Sarah, and shortly after that, nothing's going to stop us now. And then we had a lot of hits and lost all of our credibility. So <laughs> I kind of say that tongue in cheek because it's more of a reaction, I guess, to, you know, some of the feedback from the press and, and certain media. And uh, it was, built the city was probably the main thing. because And, and you know, really, to me, uh, I always looked at that. So what I, what attracted me to we built this city was was the uh, lyric and the verses. You know, it's very it's very uh, you know complex and multifaceted, and uh, and not really um, not clearly spelled out. You know, it's very interpretive as to what he's talking about there. It's written the words are written by Bernie Taupin, who I think oh. is one of the greatest lyric writers in rock and roll history, and. Um, and so I think that the song's really gotten a bad rap. You know, I think there's really more to it than people take away from it, because I think generally what happened was all people took away from it was the anthemic chorus. We built this city, we built this city on rock and roll. And never really got into the nuts and bolts of the song. And also, because of that chorus, I think people interpreted it, a lot of people interpreted it as if we were saying, as if the we was Starship and the city was San Francisco. And to me, see, it was never anything about that. The we, to me, was the collective we. All of us who love music and love rock and roll and were children of the 60s and believed that music was the path to change the world. The city is just a symbol for, you know, the city to me was not like streets and buildings and a geographical thing. It was an ideological thing, you know, the city of just people, the tribes of people. And I guess, <laughs> I guess maybe, uh, I just assumed that everybody out there listening was going to get the same thing out of it that I was getting and not realizing that most people are not going to maybe <laughs> maybe see it so multifaceted. <laughs> and then, and I think another part of it was just because of the history of the band, because of the history and the, you know, that went the lineage back to the 60s and the Jefferson Airplane and that whole romantic era of time to where people thought, oh wow, man, they used to be so underground and they were radical and they stood for something and now they're just singing this big corporate anthemic rock song, you know, we built this city, look how cool we are. And I think that was part of it too. Interesting. And I just never see, when we were making that song or when I was listening to the song, I never saw any of that stuff coming. I thought everybody would just think, oh, this is a quirky little song with a really dark underbelly. <laughs> but. Interesting. No, it's hard to it say. had to go be a smash single and win it all, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Success really yeah, once again. Really. <laughs>